Hi, I'm Josh Elledge, the Chief Executive Angel at SavingsAngel.com, and welcome to the Savings Angel Show. I'm podcasting to you from the city, beautiful Orlando, Florida. Now, come on, we did that joke last week. Now, I'm an extremely busy consumer expert, money-saving advocate, syndicated newspaper columnist, and that guy that turns digital entrepreneurs into media celebrities at upmyinfluence.com. I love what I do, and I can't wait to get going on today's episode. So in order to help you save more, earn more, and live more abundantly on today's show, I'll be covering nine ways to protect your identity. And trust me, you need to know this. We're going to talk about my ultimate hookup for buying clothes online at up to 90% off. Total, total hookup. And then finally, have you ever wondered what it would be like to be a blue man from Blue Man Group? Well, guess what? I interview a blue man, and I'm going to share that with you. Uh, It's from uh, Blue Man Group in Universal Orlando, and it's I'm so excited to share this interview with you. So with that, let's get going. Now, the holiday shopping season is fast approaching, and with it, the risk of identity theft. Not a fan. Now, whether shopping in-store or online, there are precautions you should take. So grab a piece of paper. I want you to write one through nine, and I'm going to tell you nine ways to protect your identity. Right? You need to know this stuff. Number one, use cash when shopping. Opt to leave your credit and debit cards at home. This way, you can carry very little with you, minimizing your risk if you find your purse or wallet lost or stolen. You also can't accidentally leave a card at the cash register. It happens. Matter of fact, I would imagine there are a lot of lost credit and debit cards every holiday season. So as as Savings Angel fans, I don't want that number to include you. Number two, use a prepaid card or gift cards. Now, using these cards have three advantages. First, it protects how much you spend because the cards are preloaded. Second, if one of these are lost or stolen, you won't have to worry about identity theft since they have little or no personal information. And third, if lost or stolen, you minimize the financial impact since the cards have only a specific amount on them. In fact, I came across a really, really cool technology that I think is probably the smartest technology I've ever found in terms of like using cards and kind of creating a digital envelope system that really, really is just super clever. I've got an interview hopefully in the next couple of episodes. So be looking for that. Number three, leave the checkbook at home. Now, some people still like to use checks, but doing so is a risk. Checks have your account and personal information written on them, giving identity thieves all they need. Choose a safer payment method when holiday shopping. Number four, don't carry your social security card around. Hopefully I shouldn't need to say this one. Now your social security number can be used to open new accounts and gain access to old ones. Leave your card at home in a safe place. You will not need it for things like shopping. Number five, consider leaving other cards home too. Check them for personal information such as your address, account numbers, and insurance details. If these fall into the wrong hands, it could be financially disastrous. Decide if you really need to have them with you. Number six, use a password manager. In fact, I don't know how you get through life at this point without a password manager, unless you're just using the same three to five passwords for everything. Do not do that. Listen, I'm talking to you now, friend to friend. Do not do that. Okay. Chances are very good that one of your accounts has been compromised. And guess what? Your name and password are already indexed. So then what happens is if you only use three to five unique passwords, your name and your password are already in the database. So 
they can just use that name and password and your email address on all kinds of different websites. And of course, as they log into that, uh, I sure hope you're not using the same password for things like your bank and that sort of thing. That really is just so risky. And there are actually some good websites. There's one in particular. uh, I'll put in the show notes for this podcast episode. You can actually search. It's legit. And they'll just tell you yes or no based on your email address if your email address and a password have been compromised. And they just give you kind of a simple yes or no to it. And so, again, look for the show notes. You go to savingsangel.com and then look for the show notes for this episode. And this is episode 226. So make sure you look into that. But again, please use a password manager. Now, using a password manager gives you a secure alternative to store strong passwords without having them on actual paper somewhere. Yeah, don't do that either. Number seven, be cautious when using public Wi-Fi. Now, holiday shopping means long lines and using our phones often. Most businesses offer free Wi-Fi for customers, but these connections are typically not very secure. So avoid logging into accounts requiring sensitive details and don't complete purchases that may make your payment information visible to others. Yeah, definitely don't do that. And so if you're on a public Wi-Fi, do not do anything where you're entering in your credit card information, anything like that, or your PayPal account. So you absolutely should be using a VPN when using public Wi-Fi, I always use it. Matter of fact, it's it's not that expensive. I recommend you go to a website called Stack Skills and browse for deals on lifetime subscriptions to VPN services. I want to say I got lifetime access to a vast secure line VPN for like $40 or something. So um, honestly, Make sure that you, by the way, make sure you share this podcast episode with your friends and family. Um, We're getting into holiday season. Look, statistically, you are likely to have a friend or family member become a victim of identity theft sometime over the next few years. If we can just urge them to change a few behaviors, we can help reduce the risk and uh, they'll be less likely to become a victim of ID theft because honestly, being a victim of ID theft can be an absolute nightmare. Number eight, avoid giving out your personal information at the register. Nearly every place you shop offers some kind of deal or savings while you pay. But to get them, sometimes you have to give out things like your name, address, phone number, email address, sometimes even your social security number and date of birth. Now, unfortunately, it's also not uncommon to be asked pieces of information out loud. Now, this can make it too easy for identity thieves. If you do decide to sign up for an offer, inquire about the process before beginning and be aware of anyone standing nearby who might overhear They might have their phone in recording mode. They might take a picture of the screen while the cashier is typing it in. Yeah, all this stuff happens. It really does. Look, I'm telling you, I'm your good friend and consumer advocate, and I want to make sure that you are just just wise to all of the ways that people are getting their identity stolen. Number nine, keep your purse close. This one drives me insane. You want to see me get upset? Put me in a room with a purse snatcher. <laughs> I'm going to give him a throat punch because <laughs> that this and this and that, this happened to my mom and you don't mess with the savings angel mom because <laughs> I owe her a lot. I'm very, very grateful for uh, what a good mommy she has. She's been my whole life. So not a fan of purse snatchers. If you regularly carry a purse, keep it close to your body by wearing the strap across you and shortening it. Avoid just slinging it over your shoulder, around your back. Alternatively, you can also clip it into your shopping cart so no one can just walk off with it. But again, you have to make sure this is what happened to my mom. She put the uh, purse in the shopping cart, like up above where the little kids would sit, turned her back, went off to get something, and they grabbed some junk out of it, including her phone. Purse snatchers are today's modern-day horse thieves, 
Again, they all deserve a good throat punch. On my behalf, they get a savings angel punch in the throat. Um, I, I say that. I, I don't mean to frighten anybody in the car. I, I, I don't, I'm not prone to violence. But listen, I know that I've got a moral imperative to share this information with you. So hopefully you have taken action on at least nine of these nine items. <laughs> And that you will increase your cautiousness. I don't want you to become a victim of identity theft. Um, now, if you suspect that that you've become a victim of identity theft, uh, if you something you, someone stole your identity, someone stole your purse, your wallet, information like that, you should immediately contact the Federal Trade Commission at FTC.gov for more information on what. To do. And listen, protecting yourself from unscrupulous thieves is part of living abundantly. Now, today we have a special offer for our angel listeners. So keep listening. Now, wouldn't it be great if there were a place that you could discover awesome discounts on gently used clothes? I'm telling you, I buy a lot of my clothes used simply because, uh, look, I can go shopping at Kohl's and it is Nothing, even with the Kohl's cash and all the other, like I had the 30% discount, everything's like 50% off. I still, like it's nothing to blow through $100 at Kohl's. So look, I, I wouldn't necessarily consider myself fashion forward. I, I wouldn't say I'm fashion uh, backward. I, you know, it was a little, little, I'd say neutral, uh, a little bit, maybe a little bit ahead of neutral. Uh, but listen, I don't like spending a, I don't like spending hundreds of dollars on clothes uh, every year. It, it's just not necessary. Just simply because clothing is just something that, uh, you know, if you're looking over your items very well, you bring it into a dry cleaner or, you know, you, you iron it up, you wash it, iron it up really well. Generally, you Used clothing is in such great condition that it is going to serve the purpose, all right? Most people, you know, who knows why they donate? I can tell you, having recently lost over 25 pounds, I can tell you why Why I just donated a bunch of shirts. They no longer fit me. They're too big. I mean, so every time I put it on, it's like I'm wearing a tent. So I gave them all away. And we got big bags going to the Goodwill. But listen, what I want to share with you is... Through Swap.com, you can save up to 90% off retail price on your favorite brands. I'm talking Lululemon, Carter's, Nike, J. Crew, and Gap. Crazy, right? I'm not even joking. It is not. I just, before I went on uh, and started talking about this, I double checked. Sure enough, there's all kinds of amazing stuff. It's absolutely 90% off retail. Now, I don't want you to think about the fact, I mean, if you look, if you want to think about the fact that you're going to have an extra $100, $150, $200 in your bank account, that's one way to look at it. Another way you could look at it is think of all the other clothes you're going to be able to get. Swap.com is the world's largest online consignment and thrift store. They're the best. Quality hand-inspected items are added to every single day in a variety of categories. Men, women, children, books, videos, toys. If something doesn't fit, what's really cool is they've got hassle-free returns within 30 days. It's super easy. So are you ready for a special offer? Here it is. Now, you're already going to get 90% off, but you can also get another 35% off select items for your first order if you use the promo code ANGEL. That's A-N-G-E-L. Angel, not angle. A-N-G-E-L. Angel. Plus, you will find new deals every day on Swap.com's homepage. I like just going and cherry picking and see, I wonder what they got today. And I listen, I, I've gotten a little bit addicted to shopping on Swap just because I love like things like I love Under Armour clothes. I love like really great workout stuff. I am in the process of like replacing a lot of my workout shirts because, you know, you can wash them and wash them and wash them, but they still, they get stinky kind of quickly, even after they've been washed a dozen times. So listen, stop driving to the store after store, sifting through racks. You can easily sift through millions of clothes in seconds on swap.com with easy to use filters to find just what you need. And you can save 
with our special offer. Just use the promo code ANGEL, A-N-G-E-L. You get 35% off select items on your first order. Swap.com, that's S-W-A-P.com, promo code ANGEL. All right, I'm actually here with Eric DeLima Rube. Eric, you're yes. a blue man. Yeah, yeah, you know, yeah, yeah. The funniest thing when I when you walked up, I expected that blue men wouldn't have hair. Yep, but, but you actually have hair under blue. I do, I do. This is actually probably the shortest it's been in quite some time. So. No kidding. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, so I have so many questions, yeah. uh, but we'll start with, of course, how did you become a blue man? Uh, well, I grew up loving theater, uh, performing musicals, plays, really anything I could kind of get myself involved in. Like most kids, I saw some friends picking up guitars and I figured, well, if I want to be in the band, I got to do something. So I mm -hmm. took up drums. So, you know, I just grew up acting and playing music. I went to school for theater and I saw the show when I was in college and just wow. absolutely fell in love. You know, just the combination of all the things that I already like to do. And so I auditioned. They said... Yeah, you're a little young, come back after you graduate. And I did, and I got the job, and here I am. That's amazing. So yeah, yeah. do you know offhand how many years Blue Man Group has been performing? Yeah, so we first started the Lower East Side of Manhattan in early shows in the late 80s. And the first version of the show that we do here in Orlando uh, opened in 1991 at the Astor Theater in New York. Oh, my goodness. And so I heard that you've actually been a blue man for some time now. I have. Uh, I think you could probably see more gray now than you <laughs> did when I started. Uh, yeah, I first started with the show in 2001. And wow. uh, I worked in Boston, New York, Chicago for a lot of years and had a really great time. And then... Left the show, started a family, you know, did some other things and was really fortunate to have the opportunity to come back into the company in 2011. Uh -huh. And I've been here in Orlando since since about then. So having performed at other locations, uh, is there anything unique about being in Orlando? Well, first and foremost, the audience. The audience mm -hmm. is just unbelievable. Everybody down here is so ready to have a great time. A lot of them are on vacation, but even people that kind of live in Florida and come to see the show are, are usually just so excited to come and experience uh, an evening with us. So that's the first thing I think it's really special. Um, it's a bigger theater than a lot of the other theaters, uh, so it has a really kind of big expanse to it, which is really fun. I also uh, used to do shows in some of the smaller theaters where we only have one drummer. Uh, we here wow. in Orlando have two, uh, so it really fills out the sound more. So it's it's a really kind of unique experience that you get here. Amazing. So in your best way possible, if you could explain what is the Blue Man Group performance to someone who has never seen the show? Oh, gosh. Uh, how much time do you have? Yeah. <laughs> um, uh, a Blue Man Group show is about uh, experiencing your inner joy and your wonder. Uh, coming into a place with uh, strangers that yeah. you might never have met before, uh, obviously, you haven't met strangers, but even with your family that maybe you haven't shared this kind of experience and, and really going on a journey together, mm -hmm. uh, discovering things about how we communicate, how we interact with each other through uh, a common universal language, which is silence, uh, and through music, through uh, eye contact, uh, something deeper than just what we often do, which is talk to each other and try to explain what we mean as opposed to just kind of sit and feel what it feels like to uh, live in the moment. Yeah. And and who actually is a blue man? Oh, uh, so there's a lot of different ways to describe a blue yeah. man. Some people would say a blue man is uh, a clown. I've heard some people describe a blue man as a very primal being. Mm. Uh, I like to think of blue man as uh, an essence, a, a part of all of us, something that's mm -hmm. universal and be a childlike wonderment uh, about coming to the show that yeah. we all can kind of relate to and tap back into when we're yeah. uh, here in the same space. That's exactly what I pick up is just this, in, this immense childlike curiosity. Yeah. And, and, to, and so as you see, you know, kind of the blue men kind of discovering this world around you. I mean, there's something just so innocent and just, uh, you know, you can identify with being a kid, remembering being a kid yeah. and what it was like you know, experiencing something new for the first time. Yeah, I think that's, I think uh, the first time that you ever experience something is, is something we work on a lot as performers, as actors, but also just as individuals that get to do this show is how do we every night with a brand new audience approach something like it's never been done before. And when we really have that experience with an audience, it's really it's not something that you can replicate. Yeah. And so uh, Blue Man Group is a great show 
uh, for families. Yes. And, and can you kind of explain how kids interact with the show? Like you see the kids in the audience. So I'm a dad. I've yeah. got three kids. Uh -huh. uh, so before I was on my way into the show tonight, my two-year-old asked, am I going to do Blue Man tonight? And I said, yes. And she said, um, are you going to dance? And I said, well, I'll probably do a little bit of dancing, I suppose. <laughs> uh, and then she said, um, are you going to put on makeup? I said, yeah, I'm going to put on makeup. And she said, that sounds like so much fun. Yeah. Uh, and I, I just, you know, when I do the show and I see kids, I, I see them, they, they don't have to uh, strip away their day. They don't have to, uh, like adults, we put so much on that we have to kind of shed to really get back to that. And children are just there all the time. They're ready for the experience. Yeah. And so I really feel their energy and ride how they're experiencing the show. And they're some of the most vocal audience members we have and it's just it really does kind of help the entire audience let their guard down when you mm -hmm. hear a, a kid laugh by himself in the silence having seen the show before and it was about nine years ago and i understand it's changed a bit so yeah. we're actually interviewing you before we're actually going to see the performance and then uh, i think we'll catch back up with you and your cohorts and you'll be in character yeah. so yeah. at that point you know it's it's the blue man yeah. character which again is is completely pantomime or in silence yeah yeah, yeah. yeah. so one thing i wanted to ask is uh during the show having seen it uh i noticed it seems like there's a lot of opportunity for improv or spontaneous mm -hmm things to happen. And I'm wondering if there's any things that you can recall in, in your time doing this that were really surprising. Oh, gosh, so many different things can happen on a nightly basis because you never know what you're going to get. Um, it changes pretty frequently mm -hmm. when, when we get new technology or we're working on new pieces. Uh, the show does change. And when the show changes, it normally is an opportunity to try something else out with the audience. We'll see how it works. But we also bring people up on stage and you never know what's going to happen when you bring somebody up on <laughs> stage for the first time. So yeah. we do this great piece where we we sit down to have a meal with a guest and uh, I've seen everything from guests scream at the top of their loves panic and sprint off stage I've seen uh, I've seen somebody well, I don't know if I want to say this on the podcast, but almost maybe throw up a little bit because ah, uh, sure. they got a little <laughs> sort of squeamish at yeah. some of the stuff that was happening. Um, I've seen uh, people just get up in the middle of the aisle and do the weirdest, craziest dance. And it brings the entire show to a stop because the blue man can't not watch <laughs> somebody <laughs> doing the weirdest dance they've ever seen. Yeah. So, uh, yeah, that's what's great about the show is that even though you know the pieces might change mm -hmm. uh something that happens on a nightly basis is the audience what are they going to bring to the table yeah. and, and and what are we going to have to work with so eric you're a dad and if you were to bring your child to a blue man group uh, mm -hmm. show what kind of things would you want to talk about after the performance with your kids well first i'd say you know what did you what did you think about the music what did, how did the music speak to you because uh, there's a lot that we use the music for to shape and tell the mm -hmm. story uh, whether that's a mood or a feeling. The blue man is really in tune to its, his environment, his or her environment. And so I like using the music as a way to talk about how they felt. Yeah. I also like them to point out like what was the thing that they really remember uh what was the thing that made them want to jump up on stage with us uh, I, I like thinking about something that would get them out of their seats and and want to want to take part in the experience because you know they're my kids i want to know who they thought was the best blue man on stage so you know i gotta ask <laughs> who is your favorite, who is blue, your man? favorite blue man <laughs> it's and it's usually one of my uh, cohorts but that's fine that's totally fine <laughs> if uh if a kid uh saw, sees the show and he's like oh my gosh that's like my dream job ever i want to be a blue man what would be a good path for them Really, I think what makes the show so unique is that we all have such diverse backgrounds. You know, I've performed with world-class drummers before. I've performed with people that have never acted a day in their life, that have a background in engineering or science, or uh, they went to school f to study English. Um, I've performed with men, I've performed with women, and the, the thing that I think is un uh, the same across all the different Blue Man is that they just um, are curious. Yeah. They're willing to experience what's around them and really throw themselves into whatever project they're working on. So I would say if you're really wanting to be a Blue Man, if a kid says, that's exactly what I want to do. Whatever they're enjoying right now to uh, throw themselves fully into it, really experiencing it, every project they take on, really get your hands dirty, live it to the fullest. That's the kind of energy that we look for yeah. in a performer. 
Have there ever been any blue women? Ah, uh, yes, there have. Um, ah. I was I was actually really fortunate when I first started. Uh, the first cast I was ever part of, uh, I performed with a woman in Boston, uh, and it was great. It was absolutely fantastic. And we are always on the lookout for um, anybody who fits the part, men or women. Uh, so we don't have any in the company right now. Uh -huh. So for any young women that are listening, uh, <laughs> I hope that inspires you to come audition the next time we're holding calls. And so what is it like wearing the, all the blue, all the blue paint? Yeah. And it's actually, it is paint. Yeah. 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 Full grease paint covered from sort of the bottom of your neck all the way across your entire head. You know, if I, if I could talk a little bit of, not just about the makeup, but yes. about the feeling it, when you put it on, it really does transform you. It takes you uh, out of whatever you've been doing that day into this other place. It's, it's really, uh, without getting too sappy, it's kind of magical yeah. to, to transform into this other being wow. uh, before stepping out on that stage. So it feels like I'm putting on a new skin or yeah. something and uh, I get to go out and live a different life for a couple hours. And after the show, do you actually then go where people are exiting and do they get to kind of interact with you afterwards? Yeah, that's one of my favorite parts of the show is uh, when we say goodbye from the stage, it's really goodbye for now because yeah. we go out into the lobby, we take pictures, oftentimes we'll sign paintings or uh, mm -hmm. autograph books, whatever anybody sort of gives us. Sometimes people wear a big white t-shirt and just want a big handprint right on their chest. So I, I mean, we, that's really what we live for is that interaction. Oh my gosh, that's terrific. Yeah. So uh, Eric, so for someone who wants to see a Blue Man group show, yeah. offhand, do you know all the cities or, uh, and, you know, how does someone get tickets? Yeah, how, how, does, how does a family make this happen? Yeah, we are in five cities uh, domestically. So uh, lots of different opportunities to see us. Obviously, we want you to come see us here in Orlando. <laughs> uh, but we've got shows in Chicago, in Las Vegas, uh, New York, and Boston as well. Uh, and all of the cities are unique and different. So if you go see the show, Show in Vegas uh, and you had a great time. Trust me when I say you come see it in Orlando, it's going to be a completely different show. Oh, really? It's going to be a new experience. Interesting. Yeah. Um, everything is run through Blue Man on the web, blueman.com. Uh, that's really your first stop for um, anything uh, learning about the show, learning about what it's like to be a Blue Man, how you get tickets. What, uh, what I should do in the city when I get there. Uh, so that's really, I think, um, the best place to start. That's great. And then um, I, I would imagine that's where you buy tickets and everything. As, um, one thing my audience loves to know is, you know, what's the best way to buy tickets? Are there any promotions, that sort of thing? Is there certain seasonal things I should look for? Yeah, um, I actually, I'm, I'm going to call out my uh, <laughs> my friend Nadira, who uh, works on our marketing team and is fantastic. Um, apparently, I just found out that we have this really terrific deal that we're we're running here in Orlando right now where Florida residents, um, $49 tickets. Um, you could start purchasing, purchasing them, I believe, October 23rd. Uh -huh. uh, and they are valid from November through December. Perfect. $49 for adults, $29 for kids. So it's a great opportunity oh, yeah. to, you know, maybe have a little early Christmas presents, mm -hmm. maybe, you know, come out around Halloween, go see a Blue Man show. It's really a great time. That's awesome. Yeah. So Eric, uh, thank you so much. Eric is a Blue Man. A and blue I man. got to interview a Blue Man pre-Blue. Pre-Blue. Uh, Yep, yep. So uh, I noticed you've got maybe a little bit on your collar here. Yeah, 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 yeah. always, always. My, I will, I will, Keep I will a sometimes bit with you. Yeah, at all times, you know, whether I want to or not. You know, sometimes I'll be having breakfast in the morning, and my wife will say, "I think there's, uh, I think you missed a spot." Ah. Here. You know, one. Well, there was one other question I really wanted to ask you. Yeah. Uh, do your blue man skills ever come in handy in other parts of life? Oh. Good question. Uh, if I ever need to stare down my kids for a while, my, my blue man skills really come into play. Um, I, yeah, I also, um, we are a very musical family. So um, we like banging on pots and pans. We like, you know, playing oh. piano. So uh, it's always great. To, I, I've got a drum set at home. It's always great to like, just kind of let the kids kind of jump on the set or teach them a little rhythm or you know, all kidding aside, one of the things that Blue Man really gives me is is a willingness to just play yeah. and have fun. And no matter how old I get, uh, being able to kind of look at my kids and use them as as the way to rediscover my youth and and I can I can tap into that a little easier because I get to do this show every night. Yeah, having seen the show twice, I you know I I really like so I'm so excited to have had chat this chat with you. Yeah. And thank you so much for answering the questions. We're really excited to see you on yeah, stage. Yeah, yeah, of course. We will probably single you out at some point ah. or another. So. <laughs> thank you, Eric. Yeah, I appreciate of course. It. Yeah.
Now, if you've loved hearing everything on this podcast, would you take a minute and leave a five-star review in iTunes? By doing so, you help us get this podcast out to more people. The higher our rating, the more we're noticed. And as always, if you have any specific questions or there's something you'd like to hear me talk about, you can drop me a comment in the podcast feedback, write me on our Facebook group, or call my podcast secret hotline. Does, I think everyone should have a secret hotline. I do. We do. We've got a Savings Angel secret hotline. Call it up and see what it says. It's kind of funny. Uh, I just celebrated my birthday. I am 47 years old. I, I hardly feel like it. I look in the mirror and I think 47 is the new 37. Am I right? Anyway, when I was at uh, Disney World, I was in a store and I was wearing my Disney World birthday button. And one of the workers there said, oh, got a call for you. And he handed the phone to me and he had called and it was goofy on the phone. And it was goofy with a pre-recorded message wishing me a happy birthday. And I thought that was the coolest thing. So uh, apparently there's a secret hotline to call Goofy and he'll wish you a uh, happy birthday. Uh, Speaking of which, another thing I learned, I share a birthday with Bob Ross, the Bob Ross uh, of just amazing, oh gosh, it's just a guy who just, just emanates so much love and, and so much happiness and so much joy, uh, all about, um, you know, attracting friends in your life and being a friend, uh, and of course, painted amazing stuff. Uh, anyway, I, that, that, that was, I never knew that before in my life. And, uh, so that was a, an extra special birthday present to realize that I share a birthday with Bob Ross. Anyway, you could call our podcast hotline and that number is 407. You can even call and leave me a, a birthday message, 407 205 9250. I'd love to hear from you. Let me know what you like about the show, what you don't like, what you want to hear more of. I'll answer your question, write you back, or with your permission, I might even share your question or story with others on this show. With that, have a wonderful week full of saving more, earning more, and living more abundantly. And thank you for listening. They get a savings angel punch in the throat.